Some people say an herb called Kratom freed them from their addiction to heroin or pain pills, even erased their PTSD. Sounds like a good thing, right? Not necessarily, according to grieving families who lost loved ones who were taking it. Tonight, our special assignment team takes a look at the Kratom controversy. Here's Peggy Fox. The medicinal herb Kratom is legal in most of the country. It's not an opioid, but it acts like one. In low doses, it's a stimulant, and in high doses, it acts like a sedative. We've talked with people from around the world who swear by it. They say it's helped them get off heroin and other opioids, but others wish they'd never heard of it. Tell me a little bit about your son, Guy. You're gonna make me cry right away. He had his whole life ahead of him. He was only 36 years old. Guy had a very serious grand mal seizure in front of his mom and his young son. And uh, effectively, his brain was dead. I was devastated. Guy Garcia's official cause of death, apparent acute mitragynine toxicity. Mitragynine, that's the main organic compound in Kratom. I have good days and bad days. He was my best friend. I, you know, the love of my life. He was my only child. What I like to say is that Christopher did uh, what would make him feel better. Christopher's autopsy showed a couple of things, a thyroid and heart condition, a muscle relaxer, a prescription antidepressant, and Kratom in his system. With drugs and Kratom in his body, we wanted to know how Christopher's cause of death was determined. So we spoke with Julia Pearson. She's the chief forensic toxicologist in the Hillsborough County Medical Examiner's Office. Pearson says the prescription drug interactions didn't cause Christopher's death. It was the very high level of Kratom in his blood that killed him. I don't want anybody else to die or, you know, I, I just don't. Franklin County Dispatch to 404. Sergeant Matthew Dana. On August 8th, 2017, 27-year-old Sergeant Matthew Dana from Tupper Lake, New York died. Franklin County Dispatch to all Tupper Lake Police Units. Sergeant Matthew Dana is clear from his final tour of duty. Sergeant Dana's official cause of death, hemorrhagic pulmonary edema due to kratom overdose. It was accidental. The kratom controversy is brewing. You start off just being in pain and then you get sucked into the whole opiate epidemic. How did you get off of it? Kratom. You see, around this time last year, the Drug Enforcement Agency said it was going to ban Kratom, basically putting it in the same drug category as hardcore drugs like heroin, ecstasy, and LSD. And when that news broke, it sparked outrage, and Kratom supporters fought back in a big way. 23,000 people sent comments to the DEA urging the feds to keep Kratom legal. 140,000 people signed a White House petition, and even Congress got involved. And within a few weeks, the DEA halted its efforts to ban Kratom. Good news for Kratom supporters like Tim Davis. That's what this fight's about, you know? Keeping this plant here. Tim is a photographer, a YouTube blogger, yeah, and yeah. a daily Kratom user. He credits Kratom for getting him off opioid pain pills like Percocet and Vicodin, prescribed to him for back pain. Me being a father, I have a job. I have so much stuff that I need to do. I got to get up. You know, my kids want to play. I can't be in bed in pain. What was that one time like? It took all the pain away. It took... Uh, all the feelings from the pills away. I felt like myself again. Tim's documented his Kratom journey from day one. And it actually worked so good that I was waiting for something bad to happen. <laughs> Did anything bad happen? Mm -mm. The American Kratom Association represents the more than 3 million Kratom users here in the U.S. Hi, is this Mr. Herman? We wanted to sit down with them, but they would only agree to talk with us on the phone. We think Kratom by itself is very safe. The way in normal activity it is non-harmful and has a low potential for both abuse and addiction. Our conversation continued and we talked about the two recent deaths. The Kratom Association's position is that in both cases, officials rushed to judgment and got the causes of death wrong. It says that in Christopher Waldron's case, the prescription drugs in his body were at almost a toxic level. They shouldn't have been taken together and that Kratom did not cause his death. Now, Sergeant Matthew Dana's case is a little trickier. 
Only Matt's family can see the autopsy report. Not the public, not the Kratom Association, and not the media, even under an open records request. Because we couldn't see that autopsy report, we talked to the medical examiner and the coroner in Matt's case, and they told us, quote, we did a very extensive tox screen, it was exhaustive, and that nothing was present in his blood except Kratom. And so our conversation continued with the American Kratom Association. Can it at all be dangerous? I don't know of anything that can't be dangerous, but historically it has not been. Now we know that there is some danger attached to it. Addiction psychiatrist Dr. George Kolodner is treating a couple of patients for kratom addiction. When we see people taking it, they act like opioid addicts. You can get addicted to it. It's not highly addictive, but it is addictive. And it is still legal, which makes it uh, uh, attractive to, uh, to some people. Also making it attractive to people is its price. An ounce of Kratom can cost anywhere between 10 and $40. And while Kratom is legal on the federal level, it is banned in two cities, six states, and more than a dozen countries. And last December, D.C. became the third city to ban Kratom. Get caught with it and you could go to jail for six months and be slapped with a $1,000 fine. Get caught distributing Kratom and you could go to jail for 30 years and be hit with a $75,000 fine. On the federal side of the Kratom controversy, the Drug Enforcement Administration says from 2014 to 2016, 15 deaths were linked to Kratom worldwide. The DEA would not do an interview with us because it says Kratom is not regulated at this time and so is not subject to DEA enforcement. But Kratom continues to be a drug of concern. The Food and Drug Administration says they're researching Kratom and because of that study, they cannot do an interview with us. Peggy Fox, WUSA 9. Addiction experts and even Christopher Waldron's mom, Laura, they don't want to see Kratom banned. They say that would stop research, and they don't want to see that happen.